Hey guys, Leon Sylvester here from Hair Guard, and today in this video, we're going to be looking at minoxidil. We're going to be talking about what it is and looking at some of the alternatives that you can use. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit subscribe. We're going to have tons of videos coming out for you all about hair loss. So let's get into it. What you're going to learn about in this video is we're going to learn about what minoxidil is and how it works. We're going to talk about a few of the side effects and considerations that you should take into account for using minoxidil. We're going to answer the question of whether there are over-the-counter alternatives or natural alternatives to minoxidil. Then we're going to look at DHT blockers. Then we're going to look at circulation boosters. And then finally, we're going to touch on diet. Quite a long one, but is going to be very, very relevant. So minoxidil is the active ingredient in Rogaine and it has been approved by the FDA for over 20 years as a hair loss treatment, even though there, are, there can be considerable side effects. Now to understand how minoxidil works, it's first important to understand the causes of pattern baldness. So what causes thinning and receding hair? Now there are various causes of hair fall, though the most popular one is androgenetic alopecia also known as male pattern baldness. Now the main causes of androgenetic alopecia is believed to be sensitivity of dihydrotestosterone. So when, the, when you've got the testosterone, uh, the testosterone hormone, when you've got an enzyme called the 5-alpha reductase enzyme and it attaches onto testosterone, it creates something called dihydrotestosterone. Now people that suffer with male pattern baldness or androgenetic alopecia don't necessarily have higher levels of testosterone or dihydrotestosterone, it just means that they're more sensitive to dihydrotestosterone. Now, as a treatment for pattern baldness, minoxidil works by stimulating blood circulation to the scalp. Now, as mentioned before, androgenetic alopecia is caused by a sensitivity to dihydrotestosterone. And as dihydrotestosterone attaches to the hair follicle and remains, the follicle becomes irritated and inflamed, and over time, this leads to hair miniaturization. As the follicle miniaturizes, the hair growth cycle shortens, and this leads to shorter and shorter hairs being produced, eventually leading to no hair at all. So where does minoxidil come in? As the process of miniaturization takes place, the link between the hair follicle and blood vessels becomes thinner. And when this occurs, less nutrients and oxygen is delivered. So when minoxidil is used, blood circulation increases and this means more nutrients can be delivered and the follicle can revive. So there are a few side effects to take into account when thinking of using minoxidil and a few considerations that we recommend that you think about. So while minoxidil has been proven to be effective in the treatment for alopecia, it does have side effects associated with its use. Now common side effects can include local irritation like itching, flaking, burning and rashes. In addition to the side effects, there are a few things to consider before beginning treatment. Results only last as long as treatment continues. Uh, the treatment actually covers symptoms, but it doesn't treat the root causes. And with these side effects and considering considerations in mind, it's natural to want to reconsider your choice. So when we're looking at over-the-counter alternatives, as it currently stands, Rogaine or Minoxidil and Propecia, Finasteride, are the only over-counter hair loss treatments approved by the FDA. Now, unlike minoxidil, Propecia works by inhibiting 5-alpha reductase. As a result, less dihydrotestosterone is produced. However, this course of treatment can have some life-altering side effects, such as loss of sexual function. So what happens if you don't want to use Rogaine or Propecia? So if over-the-counter medications aren't an option for you, or if you've tried both with poor results, or you're just not even happy to do it, you'll be happy to know that there are natural alternatives. Now, many of these alternatives fall into one of two groups, or sometimes both, so we're going to take a look at those now. First is you've got DHT blockers. Now, as sensitivity to DHT is the main culprit in androgenetic alopecia, it makes sense to use DHT blockers. Now, while we recommend a different method, which we'll get into a little bit later, uh, this can be a great way to get started on your hair growth journey. So some great natural DHT blockers that you can use include pumpkin seed oil, Eclonia cava, 
saw palmetto and the reishi mushroom. While this list is far from extensive, it does contain the more powerful DHT blockers as proven by science. And we do have videos on these individual oils and uh, DHT blockers. So for example, uh, pumpkin seed oil, it improves both hair count and hair thickness. And this was a result of a 24 week study. We do link down any study that we talk about will always be linked down in the description. So if you want to go and read the study for yourself and learn about the science of uh, pumpkin seed oil, then you can head down and do that for yourself. But as you can see here, the, um, the treatment versus the placebo saw some pretty interesting increases in hair count and hair thickness. Now in another study, the reishi mushroom was proven to be the most effective mushroom species at inhibiting 5-alpha reductase, which was the enzyme that attaches onto testosterone to create dihydrotestosterone, uh, and that proved to be the best inhibitor. Now we've also got circulation boosters that you can use, and there are a few oils and herbs that can improve blood circulation. We recommend peppermint oil, aloe vera, rosemary oil, lavender oil, and amla oil. Now we do recommend that you also practice manual stimulation of the scalp for added benefits. And there are two main routes you can take when it comes to stimulation of the scalp. The first is the scalp massage and it involves gentle stimulation of the scalp either with your fingertips or a head massaging device. As you gently work the scalp, blood flow increases. This can lead to improved circulation overall and can stimulate new hair growth when practiced continually over a period of time. Secondly, a more intensive and effective route is something called microneedling. Now, as a practice commonly used to reduce scarring, microneedling involves the use of tiny needles. And these needles are gently rolled over the scalp and a small puncture wounds are made. As the wounds heal, a three-step process occurs, which is inflammation, proliferation, and maturation. As the remodeling takes place, the healthy hair follicles are able to form and this can stimulate the growth of healthy hair. And the process also makes it possible for more natural oils to absorb. Now, the ultimate minoxidil substitute is diet alkalization. Now, we mentioned before that whilst DHD blockers can give you a solid start, they won't solve the underlying issue. So first, what is the underlying cause of thinning hair? In our years of research at HairGuard, we believe that one of the main contributors of genetic alopecia is to be poor diet. Now, as a result of a high fat and acidic diet that is very popular in the West, the body reacts with inflammation. Now, this further perpetuates the hair miniaturization cycle and it makes it impossible for your hair to actually regrow. Now, the answer is that if acidity is causing the majority of these issues, then alkalization can put a stop to them. So the foods that we tend to eat fall on either side of the pH scale. They're either acidic or alkaline. Now, if you eat too many foods with high acidity, which such as sugary grains, unhealthy fats, carbonated drinks, red meat, then your bloodstream's net pH will be acidic. Now, however, if you eat foods that are more alkaline, your bloodstream's pH will be alkaline. Now, we know that DHT triggers hair loss in individuals with male pattern baldness, and we also know that DHT is produced when testosterone and 5-alpha reductase interact. Furthermore, this enzyme is known to function particularly well in acidic environments. So do you see where we're going with this? So in order to reduce the functioning of 5-alpha reductase, then the net pH of your body must be alkaline. And this is quite simple to do. So you basically start cutting out acidic foods and transition to alkaline only foods. Now it can be difficult, and we recommend that you may start your morning with something like a morning vegetable juice or smoothie and then eventually you can start branching out and adding more alkaline foods to your diet. Now while minoxidil is popular in the hair loss community, not everybody wants to use minoxidil uh, as part of their hair growth regimen. In fact, we recommend against its use entirely. Instead, we believe that natural is the way to go. Not only can the results of many natural ingredients be more effective than minoxidil, but they also come with less side effects. So guys, that's what we have for you today on minoxidil. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to hit subscribe if you want more videos and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Goodbye.